In this video, we're going to examine how to solve rational equations. We're going to do two examples. So in our first example, we've got a rational equation here because I have, you know, a polynomial over a polynomial. So we have x over x minus 2 equals 2 over x minus 2, but then I have this plus 2 over here. Now, what we want to do in problems like these is we want to get a common denominator. And you're going to get it just like you do if we're doing regular fractions. If you see that this term has a denominator of x minus 2 and this term has the same denominator, then I want to create the same denominator over here. And our way we do that is I can't change the value of this. I can only multiply it by a form of 1. And our form of 1, and it's what I always, always call it the fancy 1, our, our 1 is anything over itself. So I can multiply by 5 over 5 or 10 over 10 or 100 over 100. But in this case, I'm going to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2. This is still just multiplying 2 times 1, but it's going to create that denominator that we want. So now all three of our terms are going to have that same denominator of x minus 2. So let me rewrite what we have. We have x over x minus 2 equals 2 over x minus 2 plus, and this is really like a 2 over a 1, so that's like 2 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2. What I like to do at this point, you can think of this as a couple different ways. You could multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 2, and it would cancel out your denominators. But I just kind of think of it this way. Think of it I'm just kind of like a little kind of side problem over here. If you had, let's say, the number 4 over some denominator equal to x over some denominator, but those denominators were the same, then you'd know the numerators must be the same. I know that that 4 must be x. So I kind of just made up this little example to kind of illustrate what we're about to do, but I'm basically just going to drop the denominators here. I'm going to say x equals 2 plus 2 times x minus 2, and we've got a little linear equation to solve. So x equals 2 plus 2x minus 4. I can combine some like terms right there. I can subtract 2x from each side. I got that by doing this. And then I can divide by negative 1 on each side and get that x equals 2. Now, while this was like our easier-ish example, uh, because all we had to do was multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2 to create that common denominator, we have to be really careful, especially when we drop the denominator going from this step to this step. Because while x equals 2 looks like a perfectly good solution, once we come back up here and if we were to substitute in, uh, you would look at your denominator really for any of these three terms, and you'd have 2 minus 2 in the denominator. But recall, if you have a 0 in the denominator, that means this is undefined. Each of these terms would be undefined. So if x equals 2 was our only solution that we got, that's extraneous. It doesn't work. So this equation would have no solution. That means there is no real value of x that would make this left side of the equation equal the right side of the equation. Let's do another example. So on this example, it, it's really the same idea, but it's a little bit trickier to find that common denominator. So if you look here, I'm going to kind of put a little space between these. If we have 3x minus 1 all over 3, I'm going to put a little space, and then we have 2x over x minus 1, and then that's going to be equal to x. Now, this term has a denominator of 3, and this term has a denominator of x minus 1. So you might be thinking, okay, what, what's our common denominator going to be? Because that's going to tell us what our fancy one is that we multiply by. And what I do is I just make it the least common multiple of the denominators. And, and all that all I mean to say is, if this one has 3 and this one has x minus 1, then your common denominator, your common denominator here is going to be just 3 times x minus 1. And it's going to make life really easy. That would mean that this for this first term, i got to look at what's missing to create that denominator in here. My fancy 1 is going to be x minus 1 over x minus 1. And then I'm going to do the same thing here for my second term. What it's missing in our common denominator is 3. So we're going to multiply it by 3 over 3 for our second term. But then in this term over here on the right side, remember this, we need the common denominator here as well. It needs both the 3 and the x minus 1. So once again, you're just multiplying times 1 times 1, which doesn't change the value of the right side of this equation. We're just putting it in the form that we want. We want that denominator. So let's simplify a little bit. I'm going to come back over here. And if I do 3x minus 1 times x minus 1, 
Um, I'm going to skip multiplying that out because I trust that you know how to distribute a binomial. And I'm just going to basically take that and rewrite it down here. That's going to become 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. It's all going to be over that denominator of 3 times x minus 1. I'm just, I'll just leave it in that form for now. Then we're subtracting. Up here, my numerator becomes 6x. My denominator is still, I should put parentheses around that, 3 times x minus 1. And we come to the right side of our equation. Um, our denominator is still 3 times x minus 1, just like we want from right there. But then our numerator, um, I could simplify that all the way if I want, but I'll just leave it as I'll multiply 3 times x and get 3x, and then I'll leave my x minus 1 right there. So, so here's where we're at. We've created our common denominator that we want, and if you recall from um, the last problem, if I have an equation in a bunch of terms where the denominators are equal, we know that the numerators must be equal. So I'm just going to drop the denominators. Once again, if you don't like that, then just multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, and it will cause it to cancel out. But I'm just going to drop those denominators. And then we have 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 6x equals 3x times x minus 1. And if I just simplify a little bit on the right side of the equation, And over here on the left side of the equation, I'm going to combine some like terms. We've got this equation that I have in red, and we need to solve that. So I'm going to come up here where we got a little bit more space, and we are almost there, y'all. So I have 3x squared minus 10x plus 1 equals 3x squared minus 3x. The beautiful thing about this is once I subtract 3x squared from each side, it's no longer a quadratic. And that's going to make life really easy. Negative 10x plus 1 equals negative 3x. I'm going to add 10x to each side. And then I'm going to divide by 7 on each side. And we get one solution to this equation. It's that x equals 1 7 I always want to double check and substitute that 1 7 into my original equation to make sure it works. I would, I would encourage you to do this one with a calculator because this can get a little bit gross. But I already did it, and I just will tell you that it does, in fact, work. So this is a good solution to this equation. So x equals 1 7.